Today, I am sitting down with my calendar to plan the month of August. In this English lesson, you will learn everyday vocabulary for talking about dates and the calendar. If you're new to my channel, my name is Katerina and I'm your English teacher from Canada. Now let's get started and dive into today's vocabulary lesson. Let's start by looking at the top of the calendar. At the top here, we have the month and the year. The current month is August. The current year is 2023. How many months are there in one year? There are 12 months. Let me help you pronounce the months. Listen and repeat after me. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Now let's talk about the year. The current year, when we look at this number, we could read it as 2023. 2023. When we say it as the year, we tend to split it up in the middle and read the two numbers like 2023. Be mindful that when people say this number fast, you often don't hear the second T. Listen, 2023. Sounds like I'm saying 20. Now let me give you some tips for pronouncing other years when you're talking about the past or maybe the future. An easy and common way to say the years is to split them into two two-digit numbers. For example, 1988, 1745. If the year ends with a zero, continue this rule. 1980, 1440. If the year ends with two zeros, it is read using hundreds. 1500, 1900. If the year ends with three zeros, it is read using thousands. 2000, 3000. At the start of a new thousand years, or millennium, for the first ten years, it is read using thousands. 2010, 2002. After 2010, the year can be read using thousands or split up into two two-digit numbers. 2011, or 2011. If the year ends between year 1 and year 9, it is pronounced with O instead of 0. 1905. 1709. Alright, continuing to look at the top of the calendar, here we have the days of the week. One is called a day. Seven days is called a week, a week. Do you know how to say the days of the week in English? Listen and repeat after me. Let's start with Monday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Monday to Friday are called weekdays weekdays. Many people go to work Monday to Friday. Saturday, Sunday. Saturday and Sunday together can be called the weekend. What do you like to do on the weekend? So we've learned the day and the week. Now from the first to the 31st, 
is called the month. The month. What are your plans for the month of August? What day is it today? Today, right now, is August 4th. Yesterday. What day was it yesterday? Yesterday was August 3rd. What day is it tomorrow? Tomorrow is August 5th. Okay, let's review. Today, yesterday, tomorrow. These words will be helpful for speaking about the specific days. Now, for example, today is August 4th. You want to say something that happens here. We can say next week, next week. Alternatively, something that happened before, we can say last week, last week. Use the words next and last to help you with this. You can use these words not only to talk about the week, but also the month. The current month is August. What are your plans for next month? Next month is September. Did you do anything fun with your family last month? Last month would be July. These words can also be used to talk about the year. This year, 2023. Next year, 2024. Last year, 2022. When people talk about their plans, they can be specific to the day or the week, or they can talk more generally about the month ahead. So let's use the calendar again for help and answer the question, what are your plans for the summer? A more general answer, you could say, well, I have a vacation planned for the month of August. I know sometime in August, the person will be traveling. Okay. You can be more specific about the week. So look for the day at the very start of the week and you can say, the week of August 13th, I will be away on vacation. So I know from August 13th, this whole week, the person will be away traveling. Finally, you could be even more specific and say the exact date. On August 14th, I have a flight to Dublin, Ireland. When I was speaking about the summer plans, you may have noticed I was using ordinal numbers. Ordinal numbers help us to see the position of that number in a list. Some examples of ordinal numbers are first, second, third, thirteenth, 24th. So these are ordinal numbers, whereas cardinal numbers are just like 1, 2, 3, 11, 20. Those are cardinal numbers. When people talk about dates, they very often will use the ordinal numbers. There are some different rules when it comes to writing numbers in English, but let's start with speaking first. If the current month is August and what you're talking about also happens in the month of August, you don't have to say the month. For example, what are you doing on the 7th? The person will assume that you mean the 7th of the current month. I'm having a party on the 14th. Can you come? Note I am using the article before the ordinal number. When you're writing the date, if you've got the month and the day only, it is correct to use either ordinal or cardinal numbers. Both are okay. 
If you're writing the month, the day, and the year, the preferred and recommended method is with the cardinal number. Let's take a look what else is on the calendar. You're going to see some writing. Here I see some writing. August 7th is Civic Holiday. So the calendar is going to have some special holidays written on it. For example, let's see what's going on in the month of September. September 4th, we have Labor Day. This is another holiday. And is there anything else? September 16th, we have Jewish New Year. So these uh, special days that are celebrated by different people around the world are called holidays. Something else we see on the calendar that's very interesting are the moon phases. So here, August 1st, we've got the full moon, last quarter, new moon, first quarter. So if you're interested in knowing what phase the moon is in, you can use the calendar for help. All right, my friends, that concludes today's English lesson. If you're new here, I'm an English teacher from Canada. On my YouTube channel, I make lessons for everyday vocabulary, intermediate grammar, and phrases for conversation. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my new lessons coming out. I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. Bye!